Oh, there we go. Hi there. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, church. Um, I'll be singing a song, a cappella. I have the lyrics here in case I forget. <laughs> We need power, true love for each other we have had. So many big but empty words. So we come before your face, asking for your grace. Bring your people to a state of kingdom life. Restore your church again. Touch your people once again. With your precious holy hands, we pray that your kingdom shine upon this temporary deeds, but to restore authority and power, let a mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. servants and your broken wounded soldiers oh how much we need your precious healing hands we need the power of the cross as the only source for us when we stand up facing final battle cry restore your church again touch your people once again with your precious holy hands we pray that your kingdom shine upon this earth through to restore authority and power. Let a mighty rushing wind blow in. Touch your people once again. Let a mighty rushing wind your people once again. Thank you, Valerie. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19 and verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. I thought I'd add verse 8, if you don't mind, because it adds a little bit more flavor to the whole passage. <clears throat> and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. 
But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals or stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. A couple thoughts just real quick here. In verse 7, where it says the angel of the Lord, the, <coughs> the text supports the reading, the Lord's messenger. And frequently that angel has been identified as uh, God himself in various passages. And it's likely the pre in our incarnate Christ, which could be Christ here. Also, it's interesting that he went clear down as far as Horeb, tried to get a, a handle on the distance. And it's possible it could have been as much as a couple hundred miles. It's quite a journey. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Pastor, Dan already knew what I'm going to say, so he said uh, before I said it, thank you. It's okay. We all have uh, blessings out of same, same word. I struggled last, in, last month, so I prayed, Lord, this is too much, enough. I cannot take anymore. Then I said, Lord, can I pray like that? The Lord said, yes, don't you remember the story that I told you? I said, oh, yes. So I went to the first King chapter 18, 19, reading all that. Then I had a little peace. Okay, okay, I can pray like that. Then I started the more about it and say, Lord, how many you Workers said, enough is enough, let me die. Besides Elisha that we just read. And I, then I looked at it and I looked at it. Today we want to talk about it, but I want to share why I'm sharing it. It's not because I want to share the message. I want to share the, my experience, my testimony with you this morning. It's not because, yes, I do love this message and that I do want you to know, but it's a coming from my struggling. Me, as uh, Jerry has mentioned about what I do, I am the uh, executive secretary of the conference. I don't know how many of you are receiving e-newsletter. Anybody receiving e-newsletter? Okay, Pastor Barry, now you got first assignment that we need to share our e-newsletter. We need your email address so we can mail it to you. One of my job is I'm sharing it, the Oklahoma update. So you, if you receive the newsletter, then you, you will know that Pastor Perry is your, your pastor. Then you will know that other pastor went to different district and you will know what we changed, what we do in the conference office. And it is important that I wanna share with you all the time. When I got to the position of the secretary, one of my first goals, I want to communicate with you, let you know what's going on in Oklahoma Conference. So I sent you a newsletter every month last four years. You should, I've, I'm sorry that you did not receive the e newsletter, but I know that Pastor Barry can do something for that, so yeah. you, you can get the e newsletter. And last month, 
I went to four different funerals in one week. And two passed away because of age, 85, 90. I had a piece about it. But the other two, one of them 54 years old, the other one was 65 years old. When I went to the funeral with a 54 years old, I prayed, Lord, why? Why did you take this person's life? Has uh, three children left, husband died five years ago, and father died 10 years ago. Now you are taking this wife's, mother's life again. What is your plan? I cried out to, to God. Said, then when I heard that 65 years a man got killed, I said, wow, Lord, what are, we, what are we doing here? I struggled. I prayed. My tears came out. And my voice has changed. And I, Lord, what do you want me to do? It's enough. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to read uh, Exodus chapter 14. If you have a Bible, let us open Exodus chapter 14. This is what God was talking to me. Exodus chapter 14. I'm not going to go all the ch chapter. This is the chapter that Israelites right at the Red Sea. And the behind them, Egyptian soldiers coming. In front of them, there is a sea is across, I mean, covering their road. There's no place to go. The end of the road. And people are panicking, complaining, telling Moses, why did you bring us out here? So there was no room, no graves in Egypt. Why are you doing it? The Moses was a strong. He was not panicking. If you look at this chapter, chapter 13, I mean verse 13, and the Moses said to, to, to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Whoa. He was strong, wasn't he? He believed in the Lord. God will do something. Then the verse 14 says, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You know, this miracle is one of the biggest miracles in the Bible, and one of the biggest miracles, Moses standing there telling Israelites, Be strong, do not be afraid, the Lord will fight for you. I was excited when I was reading this, this kind of you know, stories. God can do for us. Then later on, later on, if we read the Numbers chapter 11. Now you have to remember, I'm not going to go detail about the chapter 14 of Exodus. I want you to study later on, but I just want you to know that there was a miracle happen at chapter 14 and all Israelites experienced the power of God. All Israelites witnessed the power of God. Now hear the story in the Numbers chapter 11, verse 14, and said, I can't, carry, I can't carry all these people by myself. This is Moses saying it. The man who said, stand still, and God will fight for you. Now he's saying, I can carry these, all these people by myself. The, the Lord is far too heavy. And the verse 15 he said, if this is how you intend to treat me, oh boy, this one he says that, just go ahead and kill me. Wow. This is the same man. 
This is the same man who experienced the power of God to cross the Jordan, I mean the Red Sea, and now he says it's too much. I can't do this anymore. Just kill me. When I read this, I almost said the same thing, Lord. Lord, it's, it's too much. Why people left and right and uh, you are taking their lives? If this is what you intend to do, take me somewhere that I don't have to see this. I couldn't say take my life. I should. But I said, Lord, take me somewhere that I don't have to see all this. Then I want to go to another story. I want to go to the story of Jonah. That's a short story, four chapters in the book. First chapter, God calling Jonah, telling him go to the Nineveh, and he's running away different directions. He disobeyed. Then God sent a storm and put him in the belly of the fish. In chapter 2, Jonah pray and confessing and repenting and praising God and say, Lord, you are almighty God, save me and give me the mercy. And he said everything he can say to the Lord that I see that he was experiencing God's power. So God bring him out of the valley of the fish in chapter 3. Now he went to Nineveh uh, preaching. And he was a preaching, if you read that chapter closely, he was a preaching not because of he has compassion to save the people in Nineveh. He was preaching to just obey that God told him to go there and expecting God will punish him, God will destroy these people. And chapter 4, now he's saying the same thing here. Chapter 4, verse 1. This change of a plan greatly upset Jonah and become very angry. Now, the plan of a change, because God was trying to destroy the people, but now God said, oh, oh, no, I'm not going to destroy them. I'm going to give them second chance. Because of that, Jonah is angry here. So, he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? Now he's saying this. Because of this, because he knew that God will change his plan, that he didn't want to obey for his call. So he ran away. Then he said, that's why I ran away to Tashis. And I knew that you are merciful and compassionate God. Wow. He's angry because God is a compassionate. He's angry because God has a mercy. He is describing this is who God is and slow to get angry and filled with the unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from the destroying the people. Now verse 3. Because you have a mercy, verse 3, he said, just kill me now. You know, sometimes the plan doesn't go along what you plan it. I thought we thought that, yes, we can go this way, and uh, it didn't turn out very well. We get upset. You know, God, here is a, here Jonah describing about our God, merciful and slow anger, unfailing love, and compassionate. All this, 
will still come to the Lord and say, Lord, just take my life. Now we want to go to the main, that first king that we read it. First king. Now, this story also, we need to go before what happened chapter 19. Chapter 19, Elijah running away for his life. But if you read chapter 18, there's something happened chapter 18. Big things happen. It's a victory. It's a Mount Carmel victory, we call it. 1 verses to 450 prophet of the other side. If I am Elijah, I don't know, I could stand still there and fight against the 450. But he did. So what, let's go to chapter 18, verse 20. It said, So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the the prophet together on the mountain Carmel, and Elijah came to the all the people and said, How long will you falter between two options? Many times we wondering, should I go to that side or should I go to this side? When 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 we deal with the COVID. Church is divided. Most of the church is divided in half and half. One side, yes, the other side, no. Yes, we need to wear the mask. No, we don't need to wear the mask. No, we don't, we don't need, we can get the vaccines. Oh yes, we need to get vaccines. Church is divided, the nation is divided, the whole conference divided. Everywhere I go, there is a division because of the issue we have. I get a call, pass the park. Are you going to make some decisions for us? Why don't you tell us what we need to do? Tell us that we have to wear the mask. No, tell us that we don't have to wear the mask. You know, Oklahoma State is divided. They are suing each other. School district is divided. We have to mandate the mask. No, that's against our constitutions. No, we can't do that. Going on and on, and I hear that. You know, today is a special day, isn't it? Pastor Barry may not remember all these things. 20 years ago, I was watching the news. That plane was coming down and hitting that Twin Tower. Watching that news over, over, over again. Over 3,000 people lost their lives. I thought that was enough. We can't do this anymore, Lord. People suffered, families suffered, whole nation trembled, whole world trembled. Today, as our nation, we bow our heads, pray for those people who lost their families. A few years ago, I had a chance to go into the memorial park there in New York. Saw all the names around the park. I couldn't read all the names. But I remember the tower was falling down, those twin towers and plane, second plane coming in. Then I saw that news every day, every hour. I say enough is enough. Elijah standing against Ahab's people, against the Baal prophets, 
And against all those 450 people, he said he's alone. Verse 22 says, Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. That is Elijah's experience. If he experienced the power that God is with him, he knew that God is guiding it, and he knew that God will give him everything he needs. And he experienced, he had the victory experience that moment. But when you go to chapter 19, he fled for his life. The man who trusted the Lord to fight 450 people, kill the 400 people, 100, 450 people, fled for his life. I was kneeling down, Lord, what is, what is your plan? What is your will? Now let's go back to the story, back to Numbers 11, chapter 11. After Moses had to say, this is enough, and go ahead and kill me. You know, I have three sons. When they come to me and complain about me, well, no, there is, you know, your young generation sitting there, and then all the generation understand that there is a lot of gaps, not just the number of gaps, the cultural gaps, the processing gaps, and you know, all these minds are totally different. So I tell my three sons, this is the way that you need to do. And the sons say, Dad, you're too old generations. When I hear that, what do you think I, I feel? I feel angry. What are you talking about? I experienced, I have a wisdom, I can share those wisdom with you, and you're telling me I'm too old. It just turned my mind away. I mean, but here, Moses is coming after all their experience. They're crossing Red Sea experience. They cross experience the water after that. They experience the manna there. They experience the Ten Commandments there. Experience all that yet Moses say, Lord, I cannot do this anymore, kill me. Well, the Lord said, okay, that's what you wish. But no, he didn't. Okay, Moses. I understand that's too much for you. So let's do a different way. Let's go find some helpers for you. What a God we have. God didn't say, Moses, don't get angry. Don't you talk to me like that. I gave you everything you need. What do you mean you want me to kill you? Dare you to say like that? No. It's OK. Let me give you some help. Let's go to Jonah. When Jonah said, kill me, Lord, take my life, it's better. Boy, you know, if God wants to save 125,000 people, maybe one people, God said, OK, Jonah, you disobeyed. I saved you, now I saved you, and you're working, and now you want me to call, I mean, kill you, you're angry at me. God is a patient God, isn't he? God is a merciful God. And God is uh, so patient, and he is explaining with uh, object lessons. And he put a plan there. And the plan grows up and overnight, and the next night it dies. And when Jonah experienced that, he was angry because that little plan died. And God says, Jonah, you're angry with the little plan that you didn't even plant it. 
Why do you think I should do with all these people? Let's go back to the Elijah story. He fled for his life. After their victory on Mount Carmel, after their big event, the weather, the rain come back, after all that, he ran away. And there was no end. There the, the end. He went to the desert. There's no place to go. Finally, he, I'm done. It's over. Lay down under the broom tree. It's over, Lord. You know, Pastor Dan says that the an angel came and touched him. The angel could be God. I believe there is a God. The reason why I say that because when you look at the chapter 32 of Genesis, there's a story of Jacob. Jacob wrestled all night with an angel. Then following verse saying he called that place where he struggled is Beniel because he prevailed that he faced to God face to face. So he called that God, not angel or man. So the Bible sometimes describes angel and God and all that. In this case, I believe God came down to Elijah and touched. He touched and say, rise and eat. Man who is running away, the doubting and unbelieving and say it's over too much. There's a, oh, too many deaths. It's over, Lord. Kill me. Yet God comes down and touched. Elijah, get up and eat. When I read these verses, I cried out again, Lord, that you are reminding me that there's nothing I cannot do except coming to you. And you are going to touch me and say, get up, eat, and drink. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 to 14. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. It says, I will listen to you. Verse 13 says, you will seek me and you will find me. Then he said, you search for me with your heart. This has always come to my heart. It did not say search for me with your heart. But it said with your all heart. God wants us everything. Not partially, not one side or the other side or here. God wants all our heart. Then we will find him. Then he said, Jeremiah 39, chapter 39, verse 17 said, But I will deliver you in that day. He promised that he will deliver us. Then verse 18, chapter 39, Jeremiah said, I will surely deliver you. Trust in me. I know we are struggling. It doesn't matter, new members, old members, or you know, being served as a pastor, head elder. We have the moment because we are human being. Moses, the greatest leader in the Bible, had a moment. 
the man who did not experience the death in this earth has that moment. Even Jonah had a moment several times. I feel like I have that moment too many times, Lord. You're so merciful and you're telling me that I have to come to you. Call upon you. It's Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wow. That thing's what I don't have. I don't know how to wait for the Lord. I want to right now, Lord. What do you mean, Lord? I'm struggling. I'm trembling. This is over. No more, no more things. Yet the Lord's wait for me. Then I will renew your strength. So this last month, you know, actually started with the camp meeting. After camp meeting, after the hard work, I tried everything I could. I thought I was doing a wonderful job. I said, yes, if we do this, and if we do this, we are not going to worry about the COVID. If we do this, we'll be OK. Camp meeting is over, was over. Then I get uh, emails. Pastor Apple, the camp meeting was a great, it was a blessed meeting. Then he said, all my family has a COVID. But if I have to come back again, I don't care about COVID, I'll come back again, attend the camp meeting. I said, thank you for encouraging me. <laughs> then I get a call from state health department. What's going on down there? We get a report. I said, what kind of report? I didn't know that when you go to the COVID test, there's an area, where did you go? What meeting did you go? There's some area that you, they are asking questions. So there's a seven cases. You know. I was happy that I only seven cases. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Seven cases reported the uh, Walker Woods. So I said, well, the meeting is over. That's what they said. Well, since the meeting is over, there's nothing we can do, but I want to just know that we got seven reports. It, it, it looks a simple issue, but in my mind, it, it was a stressful issue because I was going to do everything I could with my own power to preventing that kind of problem, but it was not, I couldn't do it. It was God should have protected. God did it, actually. God protected. And many people are saying, even I know that I'm going to get that COVID, I'm coming back. Amen. I said, yes, Lord. And then in all that July, that all the August the deaths, all September, all new pastors' assignments, Sorry, Pastor Barry. We, we're almost done with the pastors assigning. Only one more place is left. I said, Lord, it's enough, it's enough. Then he said, don't you remember when Moses asked me that, why me? I am, I am not qualified to lead out the people out of the Egypt. So why me? God didn't answer to Moses, because you know what you're doing. You are trained 40 years in Egypt, the palace, and you are trained 40 years in desert. You are good to lead out the people. He didn't say that. I was looking that area. But he said, God said to Moses, Moses, I am going to be with you. What an answer, isn't it? It's not about you. It's me. I am the one who's going to lead you. Don't worry about it. That's why he reminded me. Struggling, complaining, and whining, and crying out. He says, it's not about you. This is what I want to share with you this afternoon. It's afternoon now. 
I'll close my sermon here. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. It says, Come to me, all, all you who labored and are heavy burdened, I will give you rest. And we're starting that on self school lessons. And all those struggles, trumbling, all that Elijah said, uh, saying, they kill me, all, all Jonah's complain, and Israelites complain. And the bottom line, Jesus saying, come to me. I am the source. I am the one that who will give you peace. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find the rest for your soul. This morning, as we remember that we struggled, as we remember saying, Lord, it's enough. I can't do this anymore. What that means is God is calling us this morning. Come. This come is not command. Come is invitation. Come to me. Then I will give you rest. And let me take all what you have. I will give you the peace. And I pray that God, who created us, who brought us from the Red Sea, who provided us manna, water, and who will help us to cross the Jordan River. We talked about only two people crossed the Jordan River after they left Egypt. And if you read the Deuteronomy, Chapter 7, God chose us not because of we have better than other people, not because we have a more numbers or less numbers. It's because he loves us. That's why he chosen us. So as we move forward, may we experience his power and love and believe in him, that he's the one who is going to carry us to cross the Jordan River. The time is very short. We are at the river. All we have to do is cross the Jordan River. With our faith, once we put our foot in the water, the river will open for us. And we are there now. God will lead us and bless us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it is the moment that, that we believe in you, that you are coming back very soon, Lord. It is the moment that you want us to be ready for your coming back. We go through difficult times and uh, trembling times, and sometimes we don't know why but we believe that you are allowing us to go through it so we can renew our strength, that we can experience your power, that we can be ready to cross the Jordan River. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for training us, teaching us, equipping us, and thank you for allowing us to, to understand your will, your plan, and tomorrow, we'll be ready for your coming back again. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our, cl our closing uh, hymn is uh, <clears throat> 343, I was singing my Redeemer, and uh, uh, you guys are going to help